Don't these guys know we're trying to make a video? Come on! That's Tyler, also known as Yee Yee. Tyler, as you just saw him roll out. Yeah, I think he won the best lookalike contest for Kenny Powers from Eastbound and Down. So he's doing big things here at Moonshine for us. <laughs> Repeat right here. This was from our Shop Talk episode 48, the performance bagger kit. We went over the rear suspension on this bike. We went over the GP front, the handlebar setup. And at that time, we had a Moonshine Horsepower headed 128 build in the bike that made 148 foot pounds of torque. After a year riding, guess what? Customer wants more. The 128 was plenty of power, and this is ridiculous. So right here, we already have the bottom end in the bike. The cases have been bored. The 135, we bore the case, but if you look, we still have a lot of meat left on the side of the case here. It's not real thin. When we get into a 139 or a 143, we gotta take out that much more material. So this still has a lot of case material. The case is still very strong, but it allows us to get that really thick sleeve that's in our cylinders in the motor. And if you look here too, we have to bore the case around the piston jet. So our cylinders slide all the way in. The spigots of the cylinders go around it. So if you look, this part is down a little farther than where the top of the spigot is. That way our cylinder sits in here, goes right around that guy, then continues around this way. Just allows it to have more support when that piston's at the very bottom. Let me see that guy, Shane. So what we're talking about is this guy right here. This guy's cut to go around that piston squirter that's squirting all the oil right in the middle of your piston, keeping the bottom side of it cool. This is where we have to index the bottom of the spigot so when they come together, they don't touch. And look how thick that is. That's 113 thou cylinder. Ductile iron, very strong. This is honed with a CNC rottler, one of the best rottler machines you can find for honing. And um, it is torque plate and honed. Our flange at the top, is thick. We're trying to keep that cylinder as robust as we can, as straight as we can, as round as we can, and as strong as we can while having it in the sleeper look with a factory cylinder. This is cool because no one knows how big your motor is with this cylinder because this started off as a 114 cylinder that we bored the stock sleeve out of and then we had our sleeves cut and press fitted in these guys. So really cool setup. This is just a little bigger than 131, but the cylinder is a lot stronger because of the strength in the material and the thickness of the sleeve inside the aluminum jug. Anytime we kind of build a motor with heads, we're gonna build the flywheel. So on this motor right here, this is an s, &S flywheel in here. That's not a stock flywheel half anymore, it's an s, &S half. It is a 4.500 stroke and the bore is a 4.375. That's how we come up with the 135 cubic inch number. The CP Carrillo rods are strong. They're awesome. They're an upgrade from the Harley rod. This is probably the strongest rod on the market right now for a Harley. We have the Moonshine Lightning rods that'll handle 190 horse. They are a little bit lighter than these guys with some extra features, but the stock Carrillo rod is a little heavier. It is a stronger rod than our Lightning rods. Our Lightning rods are just gonna free up a little bit of rotating mass in the beam, and we have some really cool features on the pin side in here that make our custom rods a little unique for some of the builds we're gonna be doing soon. These case plugs are awesome. Nine Finger Fab made these for us. They go right around the rod. Make sure you don't accidentally drop something in the case while you're building the motor. It just keeps everything really clean, so we appreciate the work those guys do for us. Thanks, Nine Finger. So right now I'm filing some rings, setting the end gap. All of our rings are basically filed to fit. So depending on the bore and what size motor, what size of rings, all kinds of different rings want different end gaps. Um, end gap also determines if you're going to be running nitrous or any kind of uh, 
turbo systems, you're going to have to basically have a bigger end gap. But since this is going to be a road non-nitrous bike, we're going about four and a half thousandths times the bore. And that's pretty much uh, standard for our total seal rings. So should be a pretty good ripper, man. Um, our 135 kit's pretty strong, but at the same time, reliable, streetable. So it's pretty, pretty cool setup, man. Our guys at Frankenstein, they do our heads. Look at this. Must install lash caps on all titanium valves. Failure to do so will result in catastrophic failure. So there's lash caps on titanium valves, so you're not wearing the stem of the valve down. Super light, nice stuff. We've just taken the monster head. Now we do the monster head only with titanium intakes and Inconel exhaust. We've just upgraded the heads to make them better. Right here, in case someone happens to buy a set, there's another warning here. Must install them. There's the lash caps inside this guy. Let's check them out. So in this set, there's only four. And the reason there's only four lash caps is because you have four intakes. The intakes are titaniums, the exhausts are Inconel. Inconel is going to handle the heat better than the titanium valves. So that's why we've only put them on one side. So we've talked about the heads a lot. We do two different variations of them. We do a variation where it's a 1.5 millimeter overstock. And then our monster head, what we're calling the monster head is when we go to a valve that is two and a half millimeters over stock. So the titaniums are right here. We source them through George Bryce at Star Racing. And he's the one that does the designing with the valve manufacturer, gets everything to specs. We also run the PSI springs, titanium retainer, and tool steel rocks. We don't uh, sacrifice anything on these. We try to get the best of the best because this guy is going to be flowing a lot of air. These are flowing over 440 CFM after 600 lifts. So they are monsters. That's why we call them monster. If you look at that port, there's nothing left. There's, there's no material that the CNC machine didn't touch. Nice clean port on the intake. The exhaust side, same thing. So what I'm talking about, sometimes when you go in to port the heads, you'll have a little material that the machine doesn't touch, like on this combustion chamber. You can see when the CNC ran over it, it hit the paint a little bit, but left some in there because it didn't need to go all the way in. But this is super smooth unshrouding the valves, really nice rounded edges in the combustion chamber. It's a big combustion chamber because of M8, but it's what we have to work with. That's why we do the dome pistons because on our monster heads to get enough room and flow to unshroud these valves, we have a 95cc combustion chamber. So with running a large 95cc combustion chamber to get the compression ratio that we need for a can that closes at 48 degrees, to maybe 52 degrees is what we're running in these larger motors, we have to have a dome. So sometimes we're running a 5cc dome, sometimes we're running a seven and a half cc dome. It depends on the cam and it depends on the size motor. This guy right here on a 135, we're typically running a six to 7.3 cc dome on the pistons. And all of our pistons, ceramic coated on the top, and then we have the Molly film on the skirts. So this is just a little bit of insurance on startups before you get all the oil on them. It just allows it to um, have less friction. This guy right here on top, which is a ceramic coat, this is allowing the piston to warm up a little slower because aluminum warms up faster than steel. We're trying to slow the growth of the piston to grow more in line with how the steel grows. And all those coatings are really doing is protecting you on cold startups. After the motor gets to operating temperature, the piston's gonna get to normal operating temperature just like it would if it didn't have a coating. But really cool stuff. I'll let Shane go over the rest, but these little lash caps right here, these guys are gonna snap on really tight over the stem of the valves. And those are what are gonna protect those titanium valves from your rocker arms. Little part, very important. So we are checking deck height right now. So we're gonna dry fit this piston with the cylinder. That way we can measure how high or low the piston is in the bore from the actual deck so we can calculate what base gaskets to use. So again, you don't do this with rings. It's just a lot easier just to fit it without the rings, kind of get it in there and set and then uh, pull them back off and then go ahead and put the rings on the piston 
get all your gaskets set and then do the final assembly there. It just as, really allows us to calculate where, where the piston is, like I said, compared to the deck to figure out exactly what kind of compression we're getting with, with the base gaskets. So now we take our bridge and we zero it. And this allows us to basically set it up. Always center with the pin. Make sure you're not on the pop-up. Got to clean them, spray them, clean them, rub them. White glove treatment right there. Don't forget your head gaskets of power. I'll just check, make sure they're stamped. Got a fire ring in there. One size can cave, one size can come back. So basically you want the bump down, line it up. Make sure they go on the dowels nice. Now we can put our bolts in. All right, I'm gonna take one at a time so I don't lose these little bad boys. So, titaniums are in the intake, so you're gonna put them here. You gotta put them so you don't drop it, and then you gotta snap. Then another one goes right here, and you gotta go snap. Get a little snappy, then snap's not on. These are little protectors for the top of the titanium valves from the rocker shaft, so the rocker shafts don't go and, and, and destroy the titanium. So that'll protect the valves for this monster. So when it goes vroom vroom, you don't hear any problems. And then we'll do the manifold since you're here. I like to put it on now because there's no powder coat in the way. It's a little easier to get it in. It's such a big manifold. It's so shiny, it's so pretty. I mean, just, hello? Hello. I'm actually gonna put a little seal grease on these. Like I said, a lot easier to get it in without the rockers, lower rockers in. But it's still got a finagle just a little bit. And I like to put these guys in first, even though some people do it the other way. But there's a dish or a cutout right here. And it's a lot easier if you get these started and kind of down in there in order to manipulate manifold to get the lower ones in. So we're not going to torque this all the way because we don't have the throttle body on yet. We want to be able to move it so we don't mess up the seals. But if I snug this down just a little bit, you can kind of get an idea of the port match if you can see in there with the camera. If I put a light, you can see the port match. How smooth that is. But you can't get much better than that. So we call C and C port matching. <laughs> Nice. He had it for a couple days. Mr. Matthew Brace is back. He tried to ride it in the rain. It, it ran like it ran like a top in the rain. It was it would run all day. But I didn't want to run it in the rain. Well, in the rain, just your left hand's now your throttle. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> your just clutch. remember, d dispense with caution. <laughs> wait, wait. Okay, now. Yeah. No, oh, okay, now I'm straight yeah. up. I can give it gas. Yeah. No yeah. longer leaning Only over. straight lines st stood upright. Yeah. So now that you've played. We, we, how many miles do you have on this? Almost a thousand? Very close to a thousand. So seven more cubic inch equals like nonstop smile for hours after you get off the bike. Uh, just pulling for days. Uh, I can't. The difference, the 128 was plenty of power and this is ridiculous. And the 128 was no slouch, but this is just ridiculous. This is, well, the 128, boom. 147 horse, 148 foot pounds of torque. And then boom, 160, 170. God. Huge difference. Yeah. I mean, over 20 horse. Any difference running the Baker tranny going from a stock Harley transmission to the Baker, do you notice any difference? Oh, yeah. My fuel economy easily was much better. 
I, I don't, it's probably the whole setup is, is because it's better, but. Your fuel economy is better with the 135. Yeah. Making over 20 more horsepower. Yeah. Than what it was on 128. Easily, easily. I had a, almost, I had a little bit less than a quarter of a tank when I got here and I did 200 miles. Wow. Okay. So you went 200 miles and even run out of tank. And I was on it. Hard. Was that the time? Where you, did you bury the speed limit? I buried the gas? several times. Past, I'm not taking gas. Past where it stopped reading numbers. And, and he's unpaid to do this. <laughs> this is real testimony here. Very cool. That is a question we get a lot. Is like, oh man, the gas mileage. No. What I tell guys is, good. if you're eating it right off a of light, stop. You know, from from start to go, it'll eat gas and drink it. But just yeah. cruise on the highway. These motors are laughing at 70, 80, 90. Yeah. Where a smaller motor is really working for 70, 80, 90, where this thing's just pfft. It wanted to it wanted to chill at 90. Yeah. Like it it felt normal like it would have felt at 70, 75 with the with the 128. Uh, it was just it was very comfortable, low revs. It, if it was at 3000 maybe. Yeah. Um uh, yeah. And then the thing is, it didn't bog or anything. Even in six, when I hit it, it just and then went, you know? Yeah, no replacement for displacement. That makes no. a difference because uh, cubic inch just increases torque across the whole graph, and that's yeah. what you get with them. When you were clicking into six speed, because the Baker is an overdrive tranny, where did you feel mile an hour you were clicking to six instead of running fifth? Because a grudge box, for a lot of guys that don't know, the grudge box, what is six gear in the Harley tranny? is now fifth gear in a grudge box, so your sixth gear is now an overdrive gear ratio. Yeah. Um, I mean, normally if, it, if I wasn't on it hard, probably around 85 to 90. Yeah. Nah, and, and that's shifting early probably. Um, but um, yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, probably about 90, 90, 95, I'd probably go into sixth. It just depends. If I'm, you know, if I'm about to pass someone, you know, I'm not gonna be sitting there for a while. Uh, I'll, I'll be in fifth, but that fifth is, oh my God. S the, the, it's ridiculous how much extra power I have in third now. Just, it's, yeah, I can't even verbalize how good it is. Yeah, it, I mean, the Baker Grudge Box is, it's a pretty expensive piece in the bike. They come with a five-year warranty. Some of the Baker products don't have a five-year, but they put the five-year warranty on the Baker Grudge Box. We work with them. It's a great product, good quality. If we need something from them, their team works directly with us. We get it replaced. But going to neutral, any problems going to neutral? Um, no. Uh, right, when, right, from the, right when I'm starting the bike, it's not as bad as the stock was. I think it, I think, uh, I think I just have to feel it out a little bit, get used to it. Yeah, I but, think a month of riding it, yep. you know, it becomes like second nature just, just right where it is and easy for you. That's right, yep. Um, and I was wearing street shoes too, so it might not have, it might have felt a little different, but. Well, I know the motor's different. Does it, does the bike run at a different level? Is it louder? Is it quieter? I think it's, no, I mean. Uh, Same? I th I don't think it's louder. I, I, I didn't want it to be louder. I, I think it sounds relatively similar. I just think it's just got. But noise and training and motor, not necessarily exhaust. Oh, no. Out. No. No. No, I didn't hear anything different. Um, no. Uh, when I shift, it's quiet. It was it was not quiet before. It's quiet now, um, and seamless. Yeah, it's just and it's very it's a very pro uh, positive lock. Like when you get in the gear, gear you know you're in the gear. Right. As opposed to sometimes you're like, oh, did I slip it or am I in the gear? I don't know. Um, it, you, the shift drum's a little different. So yeah. It shifts in. Yeah. Now we adjusted your suspension a little bit when you're here. Yeah. Were you able to notice anything? Yes. Big time, big time. I, j I just needed a little bit softer, and that's exact. It, it was perfect. You want to play around with it more? Um, I don't. I don't. I see. I don't. I, how would we? How next, would we? Well, next time, like normally. Yeah. Because we did these two clicks off in the back, right? Compression. I would do two more, right? And you ride and be like, oh, that's better, or ooh, that's not. That's not better. I liked it better before. That's how I'd mess with it now, and I would do the same thing with your compression and rebound up here. Okay. Maybe play with that. You can play with it on your ride, or you can yeah. play with it when you get home. Yeah. 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 I, it's really good. It's it's it's. I think uh, the the person who set it up was probably my size, but liked it a little stiffer for these long hauls. I just like it a little bit because the separators and the concrete for long hauls just gets you after a while. Well, we put we put your preload 
right where it needs to be of your weight on it. Right. And now instead of riding on top, you're kind of riding in mm -hmm. the groove where the suspension wants to be. And that makes a difference there. I think that's probably the biggest difference we did yeah. is set that front preload a little bit more before you can get it dialed in. So this guy has the GP front cartridge kit in it. It's an awesome setup. It's fully adjustable. We've shown this bike off before, but it's got the rebound on the right hand side. You have compression on left in both of them. Your left and right have what's called your preload. It's a really, really cool bike. Next, carbon fiber rims. <laughs> Well, man, thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah, appreciate it. Awesome, man. I appreciate I it. I love this one. Of my favorite colors they ever made. 